Does the chlorine in your tap water harm your plants? I mean, chlorine is put in that water to kill things. It kills the microbes. It tries to disinfect the water. So is that chlorine also dangerous for your plants? Some municipalities don't use chlorine. They use something called chloramine. Is that toxic to plants? Can you get rid of chlorine and chloramine so it's not in your water? And what happens when you water the soil and the compost pile outside? Are you killing all the microbes? Do you have to replace all those microbes now? And what about ponds? Fish and other aquatic life is very sensitive to chlorine. Can you use tap water in those situations? Well, in this video, I'm going to answer all of those questions and explain everything you need to know about chlorine and chloramine. Let's start with the basics. What are these two compounds? What is chlorine? Well, chlorine is an element. It's actually a gas. And we put that in drinking water to kill microbes. We want to disinfect the water so that when we drink it, we don't get sick. And it's a very effective way to do that. The interesting thing is that plants actually need some chlorine. So a little bit is good. Too much is harmful. Remember that toxicity is a function of dose. Chemicals are only toxic if we're exposed to high levels. So in this discussion, it's important to understand what is a high level. At what level will it harm plants? Now, chloramine is very similar to chlorine. When municipalities use chloramine, what they do is they mix chlorine and ammonia, and they put them together, and that forms chloramine right in the water. It's a bit more effective than just chlorine but more expensive. So only about 25% of municipalities in North America use chloramine, and the rest still use chlorine. If you want to know what your water has, phone the municipality, the city you live in, and they'll be able to tell you. How much chlorine is in drinking water? The World Health Organization and the CDC have both looked at this, and they've determined that a level of 4 or 5 ppm is safe for us to drink. Most municipalities keep the value below that. That's the amount of chlorine in our drinking water, four parts per million. What about chloramine? Well, it turns out that the level of chloramine is the same. It's about four parts per million. The next question we have to ask is, what is the toxic level for plants? And there have been a number of studies on this. One study looked at eight different kinds of bedding plants and nine different shrubs. They sprayed the plants repeatedly with 100 parts per million chlorine and they found no significant damage to the plants. Another study looked at the effect of chlorine on things like radish and lettuce and also found no damage at 100 parts per million. These tests were done on plants growing in soil and not hydroponics. Hydroponics can be a little different because the plants are actually growing in the water all the time, so they absorb more chlorine that way. When you spray water with chlorine in it on soil, the soil actually absorbs the chlorine and keeps it away from the roots. 100 parts per million is quite safe for plants. The drinking water you have has less than 4 parts per million. So you can see that the chlorine in drinking water is not a problem for plants. It's perfectly safe. The same goes for chloramine. The toxicity level for chloramine is also somewhere above 100 parts per million. So four parts per million is quite safe. Now there are a couple of special situations you have to be aware of. I already mentioned about hydroponics. So if you're doing that, have a look at the values in hydroponics. The other issue that some of you may have is swimming pool. The chlorine level in swimming pools is much higher than 4 ppm. And that water can be toxic to plants. So be very careful about the plants you have around your swimming pool. They can be affected by the chlorine. What about the microbes in soil and compost? By now, most of you know that it's important to keep those microbes alive. That's what's making healthy soil and helping your plants grow. Now you take this water with chlorine in it and dump it on your soil. Doesn't that kill them all? Well, sort of. In one study, researchers continuously applied highly chlorinated water to soil for 126 days. Two days after they stopped, 
the soil microorganism population was the same as it was before the treatment started. So adding chlorinated water from your tap to soil and compost does kill off microbes. But soil and compost has such huge amounts of microbes, and the chlorine only kills some of them. Within hours and days of stopping that water flow, you're back to normal. Using tap water with chlorine in it is not harming the micro population in your soil. This little experiment also tells us a lot about these commercial products, which are micro. They're telling you you need those to make your soil better. But the experiments show that even when you kill off a lot of them with chlorine, they bounce right back. And then within two days, you've got natural levels of microbes back. You don't have to buy products like humic acid and mycorrhizal fungi. Your soil takes care of itself. Now what about ponds? Ponds are a different situation. I'm not really sure how the chlorine in tap water affects the plants. I just can't find any good scientific data that has looked at that. But what we do know is that the aquatic life, the insects, the fish, the frogs and toads, they're very sensitive to chlorine. Their toxicity level is much lower than plants. So if I fill my pond with tap water and it's at four parts per million, and then I throw in some fish, they're going to get harmed. Now, if your water has chlorine in it, then just let it sit a couple days. Chlorine very easily comes out of that water. And within a few days, that level has dropped way down and you can put the fish in. Topping up your pond is also not a problem. So you're adding a few inches of water once a week. That's not enough chlorine to cause a problem. However, if your tap water has chloramine in it, that's a different situation. Chloramine does not evaporate from the water. It tends to stay in that water longer. That's why some municipalities use it. It's a longer acting agent for killing microbes. And so the levels stay higher in the pond. I'm going to have a look at this in a future video, but for now, I don't know what the answer is. But chloramine in tap water may be harming your fish and frogs. Bottom line, unless you're dealing with a pond, and you have chloramine in your tap water, you have nothing to worry about. Chlorine and chloramine are safe for plants. Use it in the garden, put water on your compost pile, don't worry about it. Even for house plants, that chlorine won't harm them at all. Watering is crucial to plant growth, and gardeners have so many questions about watering. It's one of the most confusing subjects in gardening, and part of it is due to all of the advice that's online, and much of that is wrong. So what I've done is put together a series of videos that explains everything you need to know about watering. How do you water house plants? Is that different than outdoor plants? What about the chlorine in the water? Is that a problem? When should you water and how should you water? All of that information is in this set of videos right here. Happy watering.